He did manage to make history, but Major Tim Peake's spacewalk mission had to be cut short this afternoon after a leak appeared in his NASA colleague's helmet. Major Peake, who became the first official British astronaut to venture outside a spacecraft, was in the midst of a maintenance operation when the pair were called back inside the International Space Station as a precaution. Our science editor, Tom Clark, has more. Tim Peake has had years of training and a month in space to prepare. But by all accounts, leaving the airlock into the blackness of space is heart-stopping. Major Tim floated out feet first to accompany third-time spacewalker NASA's Tim Copra. After a few moments to take it all in, the American checks in on the novice. How are you doing? Yeah, fine, just hanging out. Okay. Hanging out indeed, 200 miles above the Earth, moving at 17,000 miles an hour. The two Tims then set about their mission, a 60-metre scramble across the fragile trusses of the space station to replace a failed power module. There was time on the way for a few photos and a nod to his sponsors. This is the first UK taxpayer-funded spacewalk. Yeah, Tim, that's perfect framing right there. We like that. Once night fell again, as it does every 45 minutes in orbit, the electrical work on the solar panel unit could safely begin. That lines up on this side. I think it needs to come farther. And on my left. If you just come over on the balcony, bolt, I can twist the box and get it into position. It sounds good. So you just come down. It was all calm in space as they passed over sure. Hurricane Alex, brewing in the Atlantic below. Sure, I'll just put a third twist in here and I'll give you a, a WVA. Everybody likes that. But just as Tim Peake got to grips with some particularly yeah. fiddly looking cable work, his colleague and, uh, ran into serious trouble. We know it's a small amount of water. NASA's Tim Copra noticed his helmet getting damp inside. It's about uh, three inches above my head and uh, if I can make it mobile. It may sound trivial, but two and a half years ago, Italian Luca Parmitano nearly drowned on a spacewalk. It's hard to tell, but it feels like a lot of water. As he recalled before this morning's operation. There is always the unknown. During my second spacewalk, I had an emergency. My portable life support systems uh, had a major malfunction, started spraying water inside my helmet, and that was completely unexpected. So we, have, we are trained, and um, uh, we mostly we know how to react to any so sort of unpredictable situations. Today, they were taking no chances. Within minutes, Tim Copra was back in the airlock. A few moments later, Tim Peake joined him. His spacewalk debut cut short, but the main mission to restore full power to the 16-year-old space station, a success. Well, joining me now from Strasbourg is Professor Chris Welsh, who is a director at the International Space University in that, uh, in that city. And no matter how many times we've seen a spacewalk, it just seems like an astonishing thing that they're doing. Uh, ab absolutely. Uh, it, it has a, a poetry and a, and a, a beauty uh, all of its own. And I, I think some of the pictures we saw, you know, both of the astronauts and the space station and, and the Earth in the background really conveyed that very strongly today. What was the significance of what they were actually doing? Uh, the major task today was the, uh, was the replacement of what's called a power shunt. Uh, when a solar array generates uh, electricity, when, when the sun falls on it, sometimes the space station doesn't need all the power it's generating, and so that power has to be redirected back and turned into heat and actually radiated away from the space station to stop it from overheating. One of the shunts had broken down, uh, and uh, that was what they were uh, replacing today. And in terms of what they're wearing, what separates them between... Uh, between space. I mean, it, it, is it literally just a piece of plexiglass? Uh, in, in terms of the visor, um, uh, yes, effectively that. I mean, over the rest of their body, they, they have, a, they have a, a, a heat regulation system against their body because they've got to be kept warm when they get cold and they've got to be cooled when they heat up. And that's one possible source uh, for, for, the, uh, for the water. And we should note that the initial technology uh, for, for those sort of cooling systems was actually developed in the UK, uh, and that was used uh, later on on the Apollo missions. So uh, I think we, we, we deserve a pat on the back for that. Uh, and then 
then obviously beyond that, there are, there are uh, outer layers to uh, uh, protect them from the, uh, the environment of space. But these sorts of leaks have happened before, haven't they? Well, as, as was, was referenced, there was the one in 2013 with uh, Luca Palmitano. That was a very serious one. There was a lot of water in his helmet. Uh, from uh, what I can gather today, uh, this was not nearly so serious. But as a result of the 2013 incident, uh, you know, the mission controllers have become a lot more cautious. So really any sign of water and they're going to sort of pull the astronauts back in for safety reasons. Now, the sceptics have been saying, why, why, why are we all banging on about this? Spacewalks uh, have happened before, but not before with a British astronaut. So where do you think, or what do you think this does for British space exploration? Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, an, an amazing achievement. Uh, I have to say I'm, I'm a little biased. 25 years ago, I was a candidate for, for uh, the Juno space mission that Helen Sharman ultimately flew on. So uh, I'm a wannabe astronaut myself anyway, though too old now, clearly. Um, but uh, in terms of getting Britain to see itself as a, what I would call a space nation, I, I think this is crucial. Uh, Britain does a lot of stuff in space, uh, a lot of science, uh, and we're, we're world leaders. But people don't always realise that, and particularly from the point of view of connecting with the public, uh, showing what we're capable of, uh, you, you can't beat an astronaut. For the inspiration purposes for you know, all, all the children in school who are growing up now, it's going to stimulate interest in science, technology, engineering, maths. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, really, it's quite transformational. Chris Welsh at the International Space University, whose existence is astonishing enough in itself. We must talk about that another time. Thank you very much indeed.